All right, so today what I'm doing is replacing the voltage regulator inside this alternator. And you're looking at a BMW 325i with the M50 motor in it. So the reason that I'm replacing the regulator is because the voltage regulator is spiking the voltage in the car. It's basically it's going from 13 volts up to 18 volts as the engine's idling. And when it does hit the 18 volt mark, the interior lights flash and basically all the instrument panel lights come come up for a moment and then shut down. So it's it's definitely very bad, you know, to have these voltage spikes. And I checked it with the voltmeter and went directly to the battery and just measured the voltage off that as the engine was idling to, to monitor that voltage spike. So there's other things that can happen. It can whistle, which is uh, not coming from your speakers, but coming from the engine compartment. If you hear a whistling sound uh, varying with your I or varying with your RPM, most likely it's the voltage regulator going out. And what usually causes the whistling in the first place is having a bad ground connection between your motor and chassis ground. So it's good to check your ground. Um, they usually look like these guys here. Um, on these particular cars it goes from the chassis to the passenger side motor mount bracket. So you want to make sure that's nice and clean and has a good connection. So as far as the regulator goes, this is a Vallejo regulator and that's what this Bosch unit has inside of it. Some of them come with Bosch regulators and some come with Vallejo and they're not interchangeable whatsoever. So to find out which one you have you can use a mirror and go in through the cooling duct on the back of the alternator. You want to make sure your battery is disconnected though before you stick anything in there. And then you can read the regulator and see what it says. And in this case it says Vallejo. So to get the alternator out, what I'll do first is disconnect the serpentine belt. And you can use a serpentine belt tool like this, which is pretty much like a breaker bar, but it, you know it's thin walled and gives you a lot of leverage. Although you can just use a regular ratchet because it's not that hard to turn the tensioner. So it's a 16 millimeter socket on this setup here. hook the belt that way. Alright, so now that that's out of the way. Okay, what we can do next is disconnect the alternator from its bracket and there's two large bolts that hold that in place. Okay, so I repositioned the camera so I can get a tighter shot in here. So I'll go ahead and remove those two bolts now. Alright, we can wiggle it down in there. 
Okay, so we gotta pull up this black cover here. Okay, we're gonna do these two wires. Okay, so, all right, from here, I'll go ahead and mount this on the workbench, and then we'll take it apart and get into the regulator. All right. Okay, so I have the alternator mounted on my workbench here. Now, one thing I checked was the pulley to make sure that it spun freely and quietly. And in this case it did spin freely and quietly so I know the bearings are okay in this alternator now if it did make noise when I spun the pulley then I would just go ahead and replace it with a new one or a remanufactured one so when I get inside this thing I might have to clean the commentator so I have a toothbrush a little brush here and some parts cleaner this one's mass air flow cleaner which works just as well as the electronics cleaner. So we'll start by removing the back cover here. straight off. Okay, so here's our regulator. You can note it says Vallejo on it. And this seems to be of a different type in here. Looks like they've redesigned the new regulator. The cap seems to be different and most likely because the brushes are recessed inside this chamber and it looks like when you put this in you push down on this cap here and that releases the brushes which then snap against the commentator so on this one it's a little different how this would go in and I'll go over that in case you do come across the older style regulator so to get started we'll remove this Phillips screw here. And these two nuts here. Okay. So the brushes look pretty good in there. There's a lot of life left. And as you can see, the difference here where they redesigned it. On this particular one, if you do come across this type, the way to put these on is you want to remove the top cover And then you can just put it on, push your brushes back. Then you can go ahead and put the cover back on. 
like that and bolt it all together. So it's quite easy to change these regulators. So that's that one. So I'll go ahead and clean up this commentator here just a little bit. Looks like they put a lot of silicone on this. I don't know if that was done by a person or a machine. All right, so we just put this on. Okay, and holding this down, we're gonna press this tab in. And that's it. So, now we just bolt it back on. screw in and put our cover back on have it so that's pretty much all there is to put in, in a new regulator and it cuts the cost down you know by quite a bit especially if you have a fairly new alternator that has good bearings it's more economical to just replace the regulator so I hope this helps someone out and thanks for watching